What's up everyone, it's your boy Malik Wilson, AKA 4K Go, back with another video. And man, I couldn't be more excited that college football has finally made its way back around. I am super excited, I don't think you understand, man. Ooh, my alma mater, my, my, my old stomping grounds, you know, where I made a lot, a ton of memories, man. North Carolina a t State University kicks off today and you know I'm gonna be tuned in. Um, they play what had low-key became like a, uh, a crosstown robbery, you could say, um, back when I was playing them a couple years ago when they were on our schedule. Um, Elon University, they kick off against them today at 6 o'clock um, Eastern time, and I couldn't be more excited, man. I'm, I'm going to be tuned in. I'm going to be, you know, watching, and it's going to be weird not playing, but, like, it's going to feel like I'm out there just because I'm so used to... I've only been out for a few months, so it's going to feel like I'm still there. But anyway... Um, you know, our offensive side of the ball for a t man, is super stacked. Like, I, this is probably the best offense we've probably had ever. Um, and I say that, you know, even coming from the offense. Uh, you know, we have, you know, superstar Elijah Bell, um, All-American receiver. He's a senior this year. And, man, I'm, you know, super stoked for him, man. I believe he's going to have a an outstanding year, you know, last season. Um, you know, a lot of people don't really know, but he was, you know, dealing with an ankle injury that he had, uh, that had occurred to him, you know, earlier in the year, which I believe was in the summertime, uh, right before he reported back for camp. So um, that, you know, limited him last year. So a lot of people, you know, fell asleep on him, but um, his name is buzzing back around, man. He has the Reese's Senior Bowl, you know, calling him. Uh, he has, uh, my agent wants to talk to him. And so um, he has a lot in store, man. Uh, you know, other superstars that we have is, you know, Zach Leslie. He's a junior this year. Um, I believe he'll have an All-American season this year. Um, last year, he was a, uh, a MEAC uh, All-Conference uh, player, but uh, I think he's about to elevate that up to uh, All-American. Uh, Corey Banks, the transfer from um, USC, University of South Carolina. Corey Banks is a, from Sandy Creek High School, played for Chip Walker uh, over in Atlanta, but a guy that can really stretch the field vertically. He's got really good top end speed, can finish on plays down the field. We're excited about him being a Gamecock. Uh, while there, he was playing cornerback. Um, I haven't seen too much film on him, but he's more of like a like a hybrid H-back type of player. Um, he can play slot and in the backfield. And so um, he's super nice. Um, like I said, I haven't seen film, but just watching him, you know, and, and seeing him, you know, play around and run around the field a little bit uh, from when I was in Greensboro and whatnot, um, he, he's, he was doing his thing. He'll also be contributing in the special teams as well. I'm super excited for him as well. Um, we also have Ron Hunt. Man, I believe he's going to have an outstanding year. Um, he's injured right now, which is unfortunate. Um, me and him were just talking right before I started this video, but um, he's out for about three, three to four weeks. And... Um, like I said, I, I believe he's going to have an outstanding year once he gets back and gets healthy. Uh, I believe he can be an all-conference guy um, and, you know, also become an All-American. Um, not a lot of people, you know, expected me, expected me to be an All-American last season. And, you know, look where I turned out. You know, I ended up becoming an All-American. So all that preseason hype, bull crap, man, that means nothing, man. As long as you go out there and dominate and, you know, don't take any play for granted, man, you're going to ball out, bro. Young Chance, uh, Chance Prod, he's a uh, freshman. Uh, well, he was a freshman last year. Um, I think he burned his uh, his red shirt last year, but this year he'll be a sophomore. He'll uh, be playing in the slot position, and so uh, I expect a lot of great things out of him as well. Uh, I believe he could be an all-conference guy too, um, but, uh, you know, it just all depends on, you know, his situation and whatnot. Him being that young, he might just have to wait and, you know, just get in where you fit in, young kid. <laughs> Also, my sleeper for this season is a man, Bob. Um, he also got hurt last year, and it set him out for the season. And so uh, I believe that he's going to come back stronger and, you know, hungrier than ever. And I believe he's going he's gonna to take off the top this year. He's going to be a vital part of this offense. Um, at the tight end positions, um, Quinzel Lockhart, who's a sophomore, and Jarvis Reed, who's a senior this year, I believe they'll both play vital uh, parts in this offense. Um, when I first got to AT, man, tight end was not – we did not use the tight end that much. But since Quinzel and uh, Jarvis Reader there, you know, I'm, I think they can, you know, do what they do. 
and uh, they'll definitely get uh, a lot of opportunities uh, with this offense. At the quarterback position, man, Lamar Raynard, man, he was a baller last year. That's my dog, my right hand, man. We talk every day, but um, he he set the standards high for that quarterback position. Um, he until this year he went you know undefeated as a starter, and that's almost impossible for any Division One uh, for any Division One athlete like to go that long without losing a game as a starter. Um, I'm not sure exactly what his record was, but it was ridiculous. Like. If you want to look him up, look up Lamar Raynard. Like he's a like he's a dog. Um, I look up to him. But uh, this year, you know, we have uh, Khalil Carter, who's a senior. We have um, Jalen Fowler, who is a sophomore, and we have the transfer Kingsley of Fetty. I think is his last name uh, from ECU. He just transferred in. Khalil Carter is the starter, which I wouldn't expect less. Um, he's he's been doing some phenomenal things too. Uh, he backed up Lamar for the past three years, I believe, and. Um, whenever we needed him, man, he came in and, and, and took the game over. Uh, I wish I could find the footage um, of the South Carolina State game where he came in uh, late in the game and threw a game winner to win the game and all hell break, broke loose. Like, that was when we were like, oh, my God, this dude is legit. At the running back position, you know, ground troops, um, you know, they, you know, everybody, you know, you know, had high praise over Tariq Cohen and whatnot, and he did his thing, man, like, Tariq Cohen is, is a hell of a player. He's still playing in the league right now for the Chicago Bears. Um, his his leadership and his contribution to the team, man, is definitely one of, like, a key, one of the key reasons why uh, A&T is in the position that they're in now. Um, he set the standard high. You know, we also had, you know, Cartwright. He was definitely a, uh, a, a huge contributor to the team as well. Um, Cartwright, Markwell Cartwright. Uh, me and him came in together as freshmen and, uh, you know, just watching him come to practice every day, like I've never seen this man upset at all. Like he, he is always in a great mood. Like he, he, he is like probably one of the true definitions of a leader. And you know, coming to work every day and doing what he has to do on the field, and you know, just dominating. He was also a, an All American running back between Cartwright and Tariq, and you know, former you know running backs that I didn't get a chance to play with, but um, you know, they set the standard high and. They're key contributors to why the you know the success is where it is now uh, for the anti you know offense. Key contributors now for this anti offense in 2019 um, would definitely have to be uh, Jamain Martin. Um, he's a junior. Uh, he was you know sharing reps with Cartwright last year, but it's it's ridiculous because like you know how you usually have a starter and then you have a backup guy who's you know probably not as good, but He's, you know, definitely capable of playing. This was definitely not the case. Like, if Cartwright wasn't in, like, just, like, like Maine was in, and if Maine wasn't in, Cartwright was in, and they both brought so many vital point. Like, they brought so many vital uh, con contributions to the team. And, um, you know, John Maine, you know, now having that solid, you know, starting position, I definitely believe he'll rush over a thousand yards. Like, that's not even, that's not even question. Um, He's 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 a dog and he brings the practice every day. He has that true, you know, dog mentality. Like, I'm gonna rip your head off. And then you have, you know, Blue Death, the defensive side of the ball. Uh, you know, they're always dominant. You know, the D line is dominant, the cornerbacks is dominant. Uh, you know, Mac McCain, you know, coming in this year, he had a, uh, a knee injury last year that set him out. He was an All American freshman and he just, you know, dominated every time he got on the field. I mean, he still can't scrap me, but, you know, uh, the rest of the MEAC and whoever else we play in, uh, you know, in the season, um, he's definitely a dog. Uh, my agent was talking about him as well, so um, I'm excited to see what he does. Uh, you know, the sky's the limit. He's only a junior, so um, it's, it's up with that. Also, key contributors, I would say, is um, Najee Reams. He is a junior this year as well. He came in with Matt. Um, he plays at the safety position. Um, Jalen Bethay, I see him, you know, dominating this year and uh, having an all-conference type of year. Amir was a sophomore. Man, that kid, he brings it He brings it to practice every day. He brings it to the offseason every day. He's always working. Um, always see him in the group chat, you know, trying to find work, trying to do something. So Amir Hall, I see him balling out this year. I believe he's named as a starter alongside of Mac. I just see him being dominant. Like I said, I can see him being an all-conference type of guy. 
as well as a uh, all American type of guy. Um, he's he's that good, and he's only a sophomore, so yeah, you know the sky's the limit for him. Other key contributors I have is you know Derek Williams, um, Will Jones, uh, Twan. I can see him being an all conference guy. He was all conference last year. Um, shoot, he might possibly mess around and get uh, all American this year for real, for real. Um, uh, they are missing Richie Kittles, who is also like a hybrid type of type of player. Um, he went out to a knee injury during camp, and uh, you know, but he's only a junior, so he has he has two more years to waste because I'm pretty sure he registered this year, so he has two more years to uh, to play and um, you know come back stronger than ever. Yeah, you know, Stucky Westbrook, uh, the the new um, transfer, the new junior transfer, uh, Alex Fumba, I believe his name is. Um, you know, they sp spoke highly about him. Westbrook, I also see him. Um, Elijah Westbrook, who is a linebacker, I also see him becoming uh, an all-conference type of player. Um, like I said, man, this team is just dominant this year, bro. Like, it's – to see the amount of talent that they have this year, um, I just pray that, you know, they utilize it right. You know, players step up in situations where they need to step up and, you know, the sky is the limit. I'm not true. I'm not too worried about their schedule. Um, teams that I would uh, consider a possible threat would be uh, Duke, of course, who is in the ACC. Um, they play them in September, I think next Saturday. Howard, who just, um, you know, got back on the schedule um, in uh, conference play. Uh, they have, you know, Cam Newton's little brother. Um, and, you know, they praise him up, you know, simply because he's Cam Newton's brother and whatnot. And, um, I mean, he's he's definitely a pretty good player. I haven't seen too much film on him, but uh, he was runner-up for um, Black College Player of the Year, so that says a lot about him. I believe, you know, FAMU, uh, we definitely shouldn't have lost to FAMU last year. I'm going to just put that out there, but FAMU is definitely a, a team to be, you know, licked out for and not salt under. Um, uh, they, they come to play, they come to play every time. And I'm, and I'm sure, you know, every team is going to want to, you know, be on Auntie's head because we're the top dogs and whatnot. But man, uh, FAMU is definitely one of those teams that you really have to look out for because they, they're going to bring it and, they, like you've seen, they they knocked us off of our winning streak. So um, <clears throat> that's definitely a team that, you know, needs to be watched out for. And lastly, um, I wouldn't really say, um, I wouldn't really consider them a threat, which is uh, South Carolina State. Um, I, only, I only mention them because uh, that's kind of like a rivalry that we have, uh, Battle of the Border or whatever. But, uh, you know, South Carolina State, um, to me, in my opinion, isn't the same that they used to be. Uh, you know, Darius Leonard came out of there and a few other players came out of there and went to the NFL and, you know, really, you know, put HBCU football on the map. So, um, but right now I just don't see SC State as a, uh, as a potential threat. Only, like I said, only mention them due to the fact of, um, you know, it being a battle of the border type rivalry thing. And in the same sense, I could say, North Carolina Central could be um, somebody to, you know, reckon with just because it's that, you know, that true rivalry. But uh, Central, I don't – they just had a, a new coaching staff, you know, change. Uh, they took our old defensive um, defensive backs coach and special teams, um, you know, coordinator, and he's their head coach. Now. He's definitely, you know, one hell of a coach. So uh, I see them being, you know, pretty well. Um, and they might – you know, game by game, they might progress, and by the time we play them, they might be OD. So, um, I might just put them on, you know, a team to watch out for. But I see, I see North Carolina NT running through the season. Um, my biggest challenge would just be Duke, just because they're the ACC and they're, you know, supposed to win. But like I said, all those players that I just mentioned, man, and there's so many more that I did mention, um, is they're 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 definitely a force to be reckoned with. So. I'm excited. Um, like I said, they play Elon today at North Carolina a t in Greensboro, North Carolina at 6 p.m. Um, I will be tuned in. I believe North Carolina a t will be Elon, uh, let's say, by 14 points. I think they're going to win by 14 points. Um, might be more, but I'm going to say 14 points. Let me know down below what you guys think the score will be, uh, whether Elon will win, whether a t will win. And um, let me know what the score difference will be, uh, you know, whether, you know, 
Elon wins by three points. Um, we know we're not even going to speak that into existence. But if that's what you want, um, let me know down below whether Elon's going to win or North Carolina a t is going to win. And let me know the score. Um, if you aren't already subscribed to this channel, like this video and share this video with, uh, you know, whoever you want to share it with um, that helps this channel grow. And without further ado, I'm out. Randy Watson. <laughs> that boy is good.